missing. AM with a two run homer from Dumazic in the bottom of the sixth. Now a three run shot from Lanfear. And we are all tied up. And now here's Nicole Morgan. And that's just how quick the Aggies can score. It's the long ball, right? It's the long ball. They, they score their home runs via the long ball. Baylor left the bases loaded. Two thousand thirteen, the season of change. A new conference with new opponents and new battles. Despite the new challenges, the success of the two thousand thirteen season was driven by the same grit and determination that the nation's greatest programs have come to expect from the maroon and white every time they step on the field. For Coach Joe Evans, the two thousand thirteen season marked her seventeenth year leading the Aggies on the field and off. For the Aggies, playing softball means more than just wins and losses, more than putting in enough work just to get by. It's more than fighting for yourself. It's about the girls on the field and in the dugout who wear the same uniform. It's about fighting for each other and the name across your chest, never giving up and never giving in. It's about being able to walk off the field at the end of each day, leaving everything between the lines. After weeks of practice and preparation, the 2013 season began at the Stacy Winsberg Memorial Tournament in Los Angeles. The Aggies would make their season debut against Long Beach State, and they run ruled the 49ers 8-0. The following day, the Ags faced Cal State Bakersfield and Wright State. In the first game, the Aggies would defeat Bakersfield 7-1. Wright State would become the second to fall victim to the run rule at the hands of Mel Dumasic and Kristen Davenport, who combined to hold the Raiders to just two hits on the day. The 12 hits for the Aggies would lead to the 11-0 victory. In the finale on Sunday, the girls would face number 19 UCLA in Easton Stadium, packed full with the Bruin faithful. Junior Nicole Morgan hit her third home run of the tournament in the first before freshman Callie Lanfear followed suit with a two-run shot of her own in the third. The Bruins managed to respond with two runs in the sixth before junior Cassie Tysarchik sent a ball over the wall in center and Callie Lanfear hit her second blast of the day, bringing the tally to 5-2. The resilient Bruins tied the game in the seventh with three runs and sent it into extras. Brittany Klopton started the eighth inning on second after the tiebreaker rule was used. Senior Megan May hit the fifth and final home run for the Aggies bringing in Clopton. And the Aggies came away with a 7-6 victory over the Bruins. We keep talking about how we want to have a fast start this season, and uh, we sure had that. I thought our team played really well, and our team is really eager to get out on the field and start the season and uh, with great anticipation and excitement, and it's fun to see us play with great excitement and great enthusiasm. In their first weekend of action, the Aggies shine walking away with a perfect 4-0 record and laying the foundation for a streak of wins to come.
It would take three weeks, two tournament sweeps at home, and a trip to the Citrus Classic in Orlando before the Aggies could be touched. Following their program's best 19th straight victory, A&M finally fell to a talented 14th-ranked Michigan squad. The girls didn't let the loss distract them. The following day, the Aggies would ride the performance of Mel Dumasich's career-high 16 strikeout no-hitter to a 5-0 victory over Illinois State. Dumasich's effort on the mound was her third no-hit performance over the course of just 11 days as she had previously left Stephen F. Austin and southeastern Louisiana hitless during recent starts. The spectacular statistics garnered recognition as the SEC Player of the Week as well as USA Softball's National Player of the Week honors. While in Orlando, the Aggies would also pick up wins against Louisiana Lafayette, the College of Charleston, and Penn State. Heading into Southeastern Conference play, A&M had collected 22 victories, came up short in just one contest. After splitting a series in Columbia against top 10 ranked Missouri, the fifth ranked Aggies welcomed the Arkansas Razorbacks to town for the first ever SEC softball series in Aggieland. The first game of the weekend, the Aggies were caught in a 1-1 tie through six innings before a Cali Lanfear single in the seventh brought home Allison Garrett for a walk-off 2-1 victory in the debut. The Aggies would finish the weekend with a sweep, sending the Razorbacks home disappointed. The end of March brought the Aggies the reigning national champions and fourth-ranked Crimson Tide from Alabama. The top 10 matchup enticed a packed house of screaming maroon and crimson clad fans. In the opener, Dumasic did what had become expected from her as she baffled Bama hitters, striking out six in a row during her seven innings in the circle. The Aggies put one on the board in the second, courtesy of a home run off Cassie Tysarchik's bat. The Aggie defense was efficient and held off the powerful Alabama lineup through three innings until giving up two runs in back-to-back -back frames, leaving A&M down a run. Even with the threat of defeat staring him in the face, the girls would not roll over. After Nicole Morgan was hit by a pitch with two outs in the sixth, Mel Dumasich showed Alabama she was a threat on both sides, sending a blast into dead center to put the Aggies on top. Alabama threatened in the seventh but could not manage to get a runner across the plate as the maroon and white secured the 3-2 decision in a thrilling victory. After taking care of business in Oxford, taking two of three from the Rebels of Ole Miss, A&M closed out the regular season hosting Mississippi State at the Aggie Softball Complex in a three-game set. After the Ags split the first two contests with the Bulldogs, the series decision would be made during the finale on Sunday, Senior Day in Aggieland. And as they had done over the course of their four-year careers for the Maroon and White, they showed up to play. In the 4-2 victory, the senior class of Mel Dumasich, Megan May, and Sydney Shannon contributed 10 strikeouts from the circle, two home runs, and all four RBIs. A perfect glimpse into what the careers of these three athletes and team leaders has meant to the program during their time at Texas A&M. Mel Dumasich would walk away an all-SEC, all-NFCA South Region, and three-time NFCA All-American selection. She ranks among the top three pitchers in program history in several categories and will continue her career as a member of the Chicago Bandits in the National Pro Fast Pitch League. Megan May will leave A&M shattering program records. She holds records for career RBIs, career slugging percentage, and home runs with 69 over her four years. A clubhouse favorite, Sydney Shannon, provided her services as a consistent pinch hitter through her senior season and maintained a 500 batting average for the Aggies in the postseason.
The Aggies' regular season campaign took them from the West Coast to the East with many stops in between. The schedule included matchups against three conference champions, 11 NCAA regional teams, five NCAA super regional teams, and three World Series squads from the 2012 season. Through the challenging gauntlet, the Aggies came out of the 2013 regular season with a 39 and 14 record and the opportunity to host their third straight regional in College Station, playing host to Penn, Arizona, and Baylor. In the regional opener, the Aggies would dismantle Penn, busting open a season high 14 hit effort leading to a 12 nothing victory. The next day, the Ags took the field against Baylor and their ace, Whitney Canyon. After a grand slam in the fourth and an unearned run in the fifth, Baylor held a comfortable 5-0 lead heading into the sixth. A&M's resiliency under pressure showed the national television audience why they had become one of the most feared lineups throughout the year. In the sixth, Cassie Tysarchik reached on a fielder's choice, which brought Dumasic to the plate. Dumasic pounded Canyon's pitch over the center field wall and narrowed the lead to 5-2. The Aggies would hold the Lady Bears in the seventh and give themselves one more inning to change the looming outcome. Junior Emily Albus started the one-out seventh inning rally with an infield single and was joined on the bags by junior Amber Garza, who singled down the left field line. With runners on first and second, it would be freshman Callie Lanfear swinging on the first pitch and sending the ball sailing over the right field wall to tie the game at five. With the freshman phenom does it again, and we have a whole new ball game. With the energy surging, Nicole Morgan took advantage of the momentum and caught a pitch on the screws to Homer over the left field wall for the walk-off 6-5 win. For us to stay in there and fight, our ball club didn't quit, and obviously we wouldn't have won a game if, if we had any quit in us. And uh, I'm proud of all 19 of my kids. They, um, they believed that we could do this, and, and uh, they just kept fighting. With the victory over Baylor, the Aggies advanced to the regional championship game in which they only needed one win to clinch the weekend. After Baylor defeated Arizona Saturday night, it would be a rematch between the two teams on Sunday. In the first game, Baylor scored seven runs in its final two at-bats to topple the Aggies 9-5 and force a second game to decide the regional championship. With the title on the line, the Aggies fought to support Lauren Ainsley on the mound. With five home runs, including two for both Amber Garza and Megan May, the Aggies brought in eight runs to stun the Bears in a run-ruled victory to secure the regional championship. The 100th home run of the season for Texas A&M sends them to Norman and the Super Regional against Oklahoma. Well, I, I told these kids just enjoy this. Enjoy the heck out of this win because uh, it's a big win for our program. For right now, I don't want them to think about anything other than how proud they should be of themselves, how they represent our program. With the victory behind them, the Aggies turned their attention to the looming Super Regional in Norman, Oklahoma, against the top-seeded Sooners. This morning on World News Now, breaking news, the giant explosion and fire at a northern Texas fertilizer plant. The blast was so intense it could be felt miles away. The victims, the mayhem, the heartbreak, and now the search for answers. It's Thursday, April 18th. With a bus trip north to Oklahoma, the team eyed an opportunity to assist their friends in West Texas, who are recovering from tragedy that shook the town on April 17th. Then, just a day before the team departed for their super regional competition, disaster struck more Oklahoma, just a few miles north of where the team would be competing in the form of a monstrous EF5 tornado leaving the town in shambles. The team quickly realized that in addition to the funds raised for families in West, the people of Moore also were in great need. With only hours notice, the team along with local residents and Aggie community came through in a big way, providing 180 boxes and 60 trash bags full of clothes and supplies and many other items to aid in the recovery efforts. The first stop made in Oklahoma 
was at a community church which had been set up as a donation drop-off. The girls filed off the bus and went to work unloading the truck that had been filled in College Station. We were happy to do what we did. We feel fortunate that the timing worked out that we were able to do it. But now we recognize that we're just the team that Oklahoma wants to be. So we're here to, to, to play and, and we're up for the challenge. While the Aggies had been focused on defeating their opponent on the field, it was clear that the Ags would come alongside the Sooners to provide whatever help they could offer in their neighbor's time of need. With the recovery efforts continuing down the road, the Aggies and Sooners met on the field to provide a welcome distraction from the recent events. Despite the Aggies maintaining a close game through five innings of the first contest, with help from home runs by Cali Lanfear and Megan May, the Sooners surged down the stretch to win. In game two, anchored by two-time Collegiate Player of the Year, Kalani Ricketts on the mound, the Aggies were held to three hits. Number one, Oklahoma would take the second game, advancing to the College World Series. The Aggies came up just short of the College World Series in Oklahoma City, but with a group of eight rising seniors and an impressive group of supporting underclassmen, there is promise for the future. The 2013 squad will be remembered amongst the program's best, leading the nation in home runs with 103 and also rewriting program record books with 366 runs and 337 RBIs. While the names Dumasich, May, and Shannon will be missed on the field and in the clubhouse, A&M has the talent to replenish and reload. Going forward, 2014 stands not just as a new season, but as a demanding goal placed on the hearts and minds of each player as they seek another trip to Oklahoma, this time at the Women's College World Series. Yeah. <laughs> 